Welcome to this video about the Wonderware System Platform licensing details. This video is an extension of the Diving In series video entitled Intro to Wonderware System Platform Licensing. The Diving In series video is available from the same source as the video you are watching. In this video, we are going to be talking about Wonderware System Platform licensing in more detail. We will discuss what System Platform is, the licenses that are part of System Platform, and where the licenses go. So let's get started. So what is System Platform? In the most basic terms, System Platform is a bundle of software. In this case, software that is related. Microsoft took Word, Excel, and PowerPoint and put them together to create a new product suite called Microsoft Office. When you purchase Microsoft Office, you actually get licenses for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Wonderware has done the same thing. Wonderware has taken several software products and combined them into a software bundle that can be licensed. Let's look at the software products that are part of the Wonderware system platform. When you purchase a Wonderware system platform license, these are the different software packages that are part of the bundle. There are other pieces of software that can be part of the overall application you create. We will talk about these software packages and their licensing as part of the overall application as well. When you purchase a bundle of software that contains different software products, like Wonderware System Platform or Microsoft Office, the individual software products usually have their own licensing. All of these licenses come as part of the bundle. So now that we have a basic understanding of what the Wonderware System Platform is, let's dig a little deeper into the licensing. Here's an example list of Wonderware products and part numbers you might find on a quote. We will be discussing each line in the quote and how the values are determined. Here's the architecture for the system that goes along with the example quote. The Wonderware application server has several different metrics that are used to determine the required license. To get data, the Wonderware application server needs to get data from some external source. This source can be a PLC, motor, valve, or any other device or piece of equipment in your system. When we read data from these devices, we get values for variables that are exposed by the device for us to read or write. In the Wonderware application server licensing terms, this is called I.O. This is the number of variables that we are reading from an external device. The other metric that is used to determine the Wonderware application server licensing is the number of computers that are participating in the application. These computers represent what is called platforms in the Wonderware application server licensing. The Wonderware application server platform count is really concerned with computers that will be hosting data or providing server type functionality. These server type platforms might be hosting objects. This type of platform is called an Automation Object Server, or AOS. They might be hosting the system configuration. This type of platform is called a Galaxy Repository, or GR. They might be hosting historical data. This type of platform is called a historian. Or they might be hosting multiple HMI sessions. This type of platform is called a terminal server, or remote desktop server. Typically, platforms do not include the computers running the HMI directly. We will talk about HMI computers in a little bit. Here is our example quote. The application server portion of the quote is here. We stated previously that the Wonderware application server is licensed by I.O. In our example, we have one or more devices that we are communicating to, and the total number of variables that we read or write is 21,000. So you can see that the license enables up to 25,000 I.O. Next we stated that the Wonderware application server is licensed by platforms. So we need to count the number of platforms. The Galaxy repository is always the first platform in the application. The AOS computer runs objects that represent pieces of equipment or functions to be performed. If you would like to have a more reliable system, you can add a second AOS computer for redundancy. If you will be hosting your HMI application on a terminal server, 
so you can use dumb terminals, also called thin clients, you will need to count this computer as well. You can have a second terminal server for redundancy or high availability, but our example does not show one. The Historian computer is running the Wonderware Historian. We will talk about how that is licensed shortly. Not all applications choose to use the Wonderware Information Server computer. If your application does use the Wonderware Information Server, it is recommended to put a platform on the Information Server computer. You will notice that our count for the number of platforms is 6. If we look at the quote again, you will see that the base application server only comes with 4 platforms. So for our system to be licensed correctly, we need to add 2 more platforms. That is what the additional line is for that we've highlighted. It adds two more platforms to the system to get us to the required six platforms. The icon on the screen represents the application server license. Once you have provided the I.O. count and platform count to Wonderware, you will receive the license. The application server license is always installed on the Galaxy repository computer. The application server license does not have to be installed on any other computer. This is a common mistake that most customers make. The next software product we will discuss is the Wonderware device integration servers. These software products are also called data access servers or DA servers. These DA servers allow the Wonderware software to communicate to the PLCs and devices in the system. There are many different DA servers because there are different PLCs and device vendors. Most of the vendors use different communications protocols to communicate to their PLCs or devices. You can have multiple DA servers in your application if you're communicating to different vendors, PLCs, or devices using different communications protocols. You may also have two DA servers of the same type in the application to provide redundancy or failover capability. Each computer where the DA server is installed must have a device integration license. However, one device integration license can enable multiple DA servers on one computer. So in your application, you will install the DA server as part of the computer. Now let's look at the example quote again. You can see that the system platform license we have picked comes with two device integration licenses as shown on the quote. If you need an additional device integration license, you will see a line on the quote similar to the one that is highlighted. Typically, the DA server and hence the device integration license is run on the AOS nodes. There are some customers that choose to put the DA servers on a computer by itself, but this is not represented in our example architecture. So here's the icon representing the device integration license. In our architecture, this device integration license is installed on the AOS node. If you have a need for redundancy, you will get a second device integration license. In our architecture, this device integration license is installed on the second, redundant, AOS computer. The next product is the Historian Server. In a Wonderware System Platform application, all the configuration is contained in the Wonderware Application Server. So in the Wonderware Application Server, you can enable any variable to be historized to the Wonderware Historian. When this is done, the Wonderware Historian configuration for the variable and the variable data is pushed from the Wonderware application server to the historian. The Wonderware Historian is licensed based on the variables configured in the historian. Wonderware calls these variables tags. So for your application, when you enable a variable in the Wonderware application server to historize its data, this adds one tag to the Wonderware Historian license count. The Wonderware Historian stores data so that other computers can come in and access it. The Wonderware Historian client software product is one way to gain access to the data in the Wonderware Historian. Access to the data in the Wonderware Historian is licensed by the people and devices that connect to access the data. Let's go back to the example quote. Here you can see that the system platform license comes with a historian server license for a given number of history tags. In this case, 5,000. For the Wonderware historian, there's a license for the number of tags that are configured for history. The license for the Wonderware historian goes on the actual computer that is running the software. 
The next product we will be discussing is the Wonderware Information Server. The Wonderware Application Server and Historian have data in them that may be of interest to managers, supervisors, schedulers, or raw material vendors. You would use the Wonderware Information Server to make that data available through the web portal. You may also have data in other systems or databases that you would like to make available through the web as well. The Wonderware Information Server is licensed as a server. The license enables the website to be active and running. Just like the Wonderware Historian, users and devices will consume information from the Wonderware Information Server web portal. The number of clients is licensed as part of the Wonderware Information Server client licenses. Let's go back to the example quote. When you purchase your Wonderware system platform, you are given a license for the Wonderware Information Server web portal. However, the system platform license does not come with any Wonderware Information Server client licenses. This license is always installed on the computer running the Wonderware Information Server. If you purchased Wonderware Information Server client licenses, they would go on the Information Server as well. That's the end of the licenses that are part of the Wonderware System Platform Bundle. However, there are several other programs that are part of every application. We'll now talk about these other software packages. The first additional software package is the Wonderware InTouch for System Platform software. This is the software that displays the graphics and screens to the users to allow them to interact with the system. As we have seen from the Wonderware System Platform discussion above, the Wonderware Application Server gets its data from the PLCs and devices in the plant. The computer running the HMI, or Human Machine Interface, connects to the Wonderware Application Server and displays the data. The HMI can be configured to allow the user to provide supervisory control to the application by writing values back from the HMI to the PLCs or devices. The Wonderware InTouch for System Platform software is licensed for every user that will run the HMI application. As an application gets larger and larger, you can add additional HMI computers to the system. If you have people that are familiar with terminal services or remote desktop services, you can add a terminal server computer to the application. This allows thin clients to connect to the terminal server and run the HMI application. For redundancy and failover capability, you can also add an additional terminal server to the architecture. Now let's go back to our example quote. In our example architecture, we have chosen to use a terminal server and thin clients to provide the HMI application to the plant floor. On the quote, you will see one or more lines similar to the one that is highlighted. In this type of architecture, Wonderware licenses the InTouch for System Platform software on the terminal server and this allows the specified number of thin clients to connect and run the HMI application. This license is placed on the terminal server where the thin clients connect to run the HMI application. If you have chosen to add a redundant terminal server, you can purchase a Wonderware InTouch for System Platform RDS failover license and that will be put on the redundant terminal server. The next additional software package that is usually purchased with the Wonderware System Platform license is the Wonderware Development Studio. The Wonderware Development Studio software is used to configure the application server, historian, information server, and the InTouch for System Platform software. All of this configuration is stored in the Galaxy repository computer. The Wonderware Development Studio is recommended to be installed on a separate computer and it will access the application server configuration on the Galaxy repository over the network. As the example quote shows, there will be a line item for the Development Studio license. When you purchase the Development Studio, you will receive a license. That license should be installed on the Development Station. There are some customers that will install this Wonderware Development Studio license on the Galaxy repository computer. Doing so is completely acceptable. However, it is a recommended best practice to use a separate development station. This ends our detailed discussion about the Wonderware System Platform licensing. If you have any questions or would like to talk to someone further about this topic, please contact the Wonderware representative near you. Our contact information can be found under the Contact Us section of our website. 
Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video on Wonderware System Platform Licensing.